1. Universal Central Processing Unit, a CPU that can physically change its circuit gates during runtime. 2. Evolving Transforming Robots or Computers, computers that physically change its hardware, software, and CPU during runtime. The patent that viewers should analyze, and directly relates to this video is patent number 12-471382, entitled, Practical Time Machine Using Dynamic Efficient Virtual and Real Robots. Approximately 22 total patent applications were filed with the USPTO on this invention from 2006 to 2009, priority. There are primarily five components that make up my practical time machine. The reader should have a basic understanding of the invention in terms of components, data structure, and processes before reading further. Components to the practical time machine, comprising 1. Human level artificial intelligence, 2. Super intelligent robot, 3. Atom manipulator, 4. Digital timeline of Earth that tracks every atom, electron, and EM radiation for the past, present, and future. 5. Virtual United States Government System The components of the practical time machine is used in permutations and combinations to build the present invention. The universal CPU is a computer chip that is adaptable and changeable and has the ability to physically change its circuit gates during runtime. Every single electronic device or machine that you buy in the department store uses a different computer chip. A smartphone uses a different chip from a desktop computer and a pocket calculator uses a different chip from the video game console. Besides selling more copies, chip manufacturers do this because they want to build a customized CPU that processes computer instructions, quickly and efficiently, for each electronic device. For example, a video game console has a special CPU, called a GPU, to process video and 3D model rendering, while a desktop computer has a different type of CPU to run common software programs like spreadsheets or word processors. If you try to apply a desktop computer CPU to run a video game console, the video game frames will be really slow. In some cases it won't even run. This is why chip manufacturers make it standard procedure to build optimal CPUs for each type of electronic device. A universal CPU is one chip that can be used on all electronic devices or machines, regardless of their size or shape. What's unique about this universal CPU is its amazing ability to physically change its circuit gates and electronic circuitry during runtime. This novel approach will enable the universal CPU to create an optimal customized chip for any given electronic device. The Evolving Transforming Computer is a computer that can physically change its hardware and software during runtime. Actually, the computer can physically change three aspects, its hardware, its software, and its CPU. Let's say you wanted to produce the smartest and fastest robot on the planet. We can use the evolving transforming computer on a humanoid robot. The AI's main objective is to make the robot smarter year over year. This robot will evolve its physical body and internal software each year and it will get smarter and smarter as time passes. This thing will eventually evolve into the smartest robot in the universe. Another important fact to point out here is that this robot evolved in the fastest time possible and every generation design was executed optimally. How does the technology work? The last video I made on YouTube was on the ghost robots. This video is actually part 2 of the ghost robots. I recommend the viewer to watch the Ghost Robot video before proceeding forward. The most complex task for Ghost Robots is the ability to manipulate individual atoms and molecules. A computer CPU is a very good example because it comprises tiny circuit gates. Having the ability to manipulate these circuit gates shows the Ghost Robot's ability to manipulate tiny atoms. The AI is made up of super-intelligent robots. 
the robot makes thousands of copies of itself and structure these virtual robots into a company-like setting. This company, which only exists inside the virtual world, is similar to a chip company like Intel or AMD. They specialize in designing, manufacturing, and testing computer chips. The super-intelligent robots control the atom manipulator to generate intelligent pressure and intelligent, controlled force fields. This in turn, creates tiny ghost robots, which are non-physical robots, to manipulate the CPU. These ghost robots are really tiny, about the size of several atoms or molecules. Before I explain how to build a universal CPU, let me give a detailed description of the atom manipulator. Diagram 4A depicts the atom manipulator. It has the ability to control atoms or molecules from a distance using EM radiation, such as microwaves, sound waves, X-rays, artificial magnetic fields, etc. The supercomputer is controlling the atom manipulator to generate something called intelligent pressure. In addition, the supercomputer uses a perfect digital timeline of Earth. This timeline tracks every atom on planet Earth for the past present, and future, every nanosecond. The abilities of the atom manipulator is to generate intelligent pressure to move atoms around, trap atoms in a fixed location, apply energy to break apart molecules, or merge atoms together to form complex molecules. With these abilities, it can build any type of ghost machine to do work. A ghost machine is a non-physical machine that can do anything a physical machine can do. Here is a ghost machine to turn a bottle cap. Intelligent pressure is used to hold the bottle in place so it doesn't move. Next, intelligent pressure is applied to the cap in a counterclockwise manner. This will screw the cap off the bottle. Different types of molecules or force fields can be created from thin air to form any shape or size tools to do work. The key here is to create structured force fields to replace physical tools. The elemental actions are, the hold, grip, push, twist, and pull. The supercomputer has to do these elemental actions according to the limited space available. If a goal is to screw a nail, a ghost machine has to do this according to the empty space available. An intelligent force field is created and it can come in different sizes and shapes. This force field can perform the following actions, hold grip, push, twist and pull the nail. The ghost machine can also cut a board in half. It uses lasers to break apart individual molecules in specific areas. An alternative is to build a knife out of metal particles and use intelligent pressure to move the blade. The opposite is true, whereby two separate boards are molecularly combined. With these elemental actions the ghost machines can do anything. Let's look at a very complex example. This diagram shows thousands of ghost machines generated by the computer to assemble a car in the fastest time possible. Each ghost machine do different things. Some machines screw caps on and others combine metal frames together. From start to finish the atom manipulator can assemble a car in less than 3 minutes. The supercomputer is responsible for the intelligence and coordination of each ghost machine. A faster way to assemble a car is to build the car at an atomic level. The atom manipulator is building the car, atom by atom, by moving atoms around, merging atoms together to form complex molecules, or positioning atoms in a fixed location. This process takes less than 10 seconds to build a car. Ghost machines can come in different sizes and shapes. It can manipulate large objects like a building or small objects like a water molecule. The ultimate goal for the ghost machines is to manipulate individual atoms and molecules. One example is ripping a person apart atom by atom and putting all the pieces back together again. If this technique is perfected, the human race needn't worry about old age or death. Applying this technique to computer chips. Here is a regular CPU found in most desktop computers. 
the AI has to physically manipulate these circuit gates during runtime. This includes things like adding circuit gates, deleting circuit gates, or modifying circuit gates in various parts of the CPU. For example, we can upgrade this CPU by doing a few things. 1. The ghost robots can add more RAM. This will give the chip more memory capabilities to store process data. 2. They can add more integrated circuits, depending on the type of CPU. This will allow the computer instructions in the task queue to be processed quicker. 3. They can modify the circuit gates in the CPU. Referring to figure 45A, here is an example. This circuit gate isn't optimal. In order to optimize the circuit gates, the AI has to minimize the circuit gates. The ghost robots can do this by rearranging the pathways. Referring to figure 45B, here is the circuit gates minimized. This modified circuit gate performs the same functions as before, but there are less circuit gates present. This is a method chip companies use to make their CPUs cheaper and faster. Generation of the computer CPU is called an iteration. For simplicity purposes an iteration, from start to finish, is set to one year. The computer CPU is upgraded after each iteration. In less than six years the Intel 4 chip went through six transformations and turned into the Intel 10 chip. Let's take a look at each iteration. The primary function of the super intelligent robots is three things. 1. Designing the computer CPU. 2. Implementing the computer CPU. 3. And testing the computer CPU, and considering feedbacks from consumers. Everything that Intel does, these super intelligent robots also have to do. This includes designing, implementing and testing their chips. These super intelligent robots serve as a fully automated Intel corporation. Let's take a look at the evolving computer. The super intelligent robots are responsible for emulating three companies, Intel, Microsoft, and Dell Computer. Intel is in charge of designing and developing the CPU, while Microsoft is in charge of designing and implementing the computer's software, which is primarily the operating system, and Dell Computer is in charge of designing and developing the computer's hardware. These three companies have to work together, in both the real world and the virtual world, to design and develop the best computer. Referring to Figure 42, the super-intelligent robots are using the atom manipulator and the digital timeline of Earth to physically change the atoms of the computer's hardware and software. You can read my book on the atom manipulator to understand how the process works. Notice the physical changes of the computer as it evolves from one generation to the next. The computer starts off as one big bulky machine. The next year, it separated the computer's hardware into parts like a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and speakers. In the second year, it changes into a folding tablet and evolved into something smaller and more powerful. Finally, after three years of evolution the computer transforms into a tiny cube that doesn't have a physical monitor or keyboard. It uses holographic projections and pressure technology to replace bulky hardware like a monitor or keyboard. The super-intelligent robots are constantly taking the computer and modifying its software and hardware according to their consumer's usage behavior. If the computer is used for playing video games or watching movies, the design of the CPU will be modified to make the computer run faster. If a consumer is complaining about the bulkiness of the computer, the super-intelligent robots will make the computer lighter and smaller. If the operating system has a security problem, the AI will provide a software patch to fix the problem. If Intel has a better design for their CPUs, they will replace the old design. This is how an evolving computer should work. Some AI scientists think that they can build a self-evolving software program or genetic AI program that can evolve on its own. This method is pure science fiction and can never be implemented. Their approach is impractical because there's no intelligence guiding the evolutionary process and this method would require billions of years of evolution to produce anything meaningful. 
The key is the superintelligent robots. Their intelligence is what allows this computer to evolve and transform its software and hardware. Let's take a look at another example. Here is an evolving robot that evolves its intelligence. Let's say you wanted to build a robot that can evolve its intelligence as time passes. The ultimate goal is to build the smartest robot in the universe. If we use modern genetic programming or self-evolving software, it won't work. This process will take billions of years to produce anything significant. According to my method, we set up a robotic company inside the virtual world. The AI in the virtual world emulates three companies, Intel, Microsoft, and Dell Computer. Their responsibilities are to modify the robot, in terms of software and hardware, to make it smarter year after year. If we run several generations on the robot, it will eventually evolve its intelligence exponentially. As you can see, after four generations, the robot is 8 trillion times smarter than a human being. We want this robot to evolve and transform until it reaches the zenith of intelligence. Another important fact to point out here is that this robot evolved in the fastest time possible and every generation design was executed optimally. The most important component of this technology is the superintelligent robots. Without that component, without their intelligence, there is no way the robot can evolve its intelligence on its own. The superintelligent robots have to be smart enough to replace all three companies and their employees. Oftentimes, I use the terminology, fully automated Microsoft or fully automated Intel to describe this technology. Speed of each generation or iteration The speed of each iteration depends on the work speed of the virtual robots. Inside a computer time is meaningless. We can define time inside a virtual world. We can say 30 years inside a virtual world is equivalent to one second in the real world. In this book, the iteration for each generation is set at one year. We can set the iteration to two months or five hours or one second. 11. Let's imagine that one iteration is set to one second. In less than 10 seconds, that's 10 iterations, the Windows 1 operating system can evolve into a Windows 10 operating system. The problem I have is how do we force these super intelligent robots to work inside a virtual world for 30 years to write an operating system? We know that each robot is self aware and is capable of performing tasks at a human level. But how do we force self aware robots to do work? This problem will be addressed in my next topic, which is called The Nature of Work in 2100. I will attempt to predict how people live and do business in year 2100. I will also provide possible solutions to the problem. As stated before, in order for intelligent beings to have a wide variety of skills and knowledge it has to be self-aware and must graduate from college. Using machine learning or deep learning or modern AI techniques will never produce a fully automated Microsoft or fully automated Intel corporation. The evolving transforming computer can change into any object, it doesn't have to be an electronic device or machine. For example, it can transform into non-intelligent objects or common tools, like a hammer, a gun, a lighter, or a bed. The atom manipulator has an atom reserve area and stores individual atoms like hydrogen, oxygen, iron, and even gold. In case the device needs additional atoms for the object it wants to build, it has to tap into the atom reserves area to extract atoms. It can do this or it can extract atoms directly from its surroundings. A more efficient way is to have the atom manipulator convert atom types. This is done by manipulating individual protons and neutrons from the nucleus of an atom. For instance, a few protons and neutrons can be deleted from a lead atom to form a gold atom. One of my proposals was to create an artificial magnetic field to hold the atom in a fixed location and use energy to insert or knock out protons neutrons from its nucleus. I have this dream of turning Mars into a livable planet someday by fixing its atmosphere. We can turn the rocks on the planet into oxygen or hydrogen so that living organisms can breathe and live. In turn, 
the oxygen and hydrogen are combined to form water, which is also essential to life. I oftentimes use superheroes as an analogy to superintelligent robots. There are many different types of superintelligent robots, each have primarily three abilities. 1. Superintelligence. 2. Supermobility. 3. Superpowers. The T-1000 liquid metal is powerful because his body is indestructible. Quicksilver can think and act fast. Professor X has remote viewing and psychic abilities. Finally, Thanos can control time and reality. We can combine all these superheroes to build an invincible superintelligent robot that cannot die. Think about it. The T-1000 cannot be killed. He is impervious to knives, guns and bombs. Quicksilver can kill 1,000 human beings in less than one minute with his bare hands. Doctor Strange can see into the future and predict all future outcomes. If we combine all these powers together, we have an indestructible robot. Furthermore, we can imbue this indestructible robot with transforming and evolving capabilities. Finally, the artificial god is a government that comprises billions of super-intelligent robots. And presumable the artificial god is the most powerful entity anyone can build. It can't stop natural disasters, like hurricanes, tornadoes, landslides, flooding, earthquakes, and tsunamis, or it can bring dead people back to life, or cure diseases. Anything a god can do, this thing can also do. The promise that advanced AI will contribute significantly to the eradication of war, poverty, and diseases is what drives scientists to build superintelligent robots. Some even claim advanced AI will lead to human immortality. Which leads me to believe, super artificial intelligence is inevitable. The human race will face this reality real soon. The problem is how do we live and coexist with these super beings? Should we hunt them down and kill them like in the X-Men movies or should we accept them into our society and treat them like neighbors? The virtual United States government is the only system that will work. I always believed that equal citizenship is the only way to solve the mutant problem. The reason the X-Men is always fighting is because they don't have a centralized government that controls both humans and mutants. Nor do they have a law system firmly established to punish those that chooses to break the law. Now, according to my virtual United States government, the U.S. will have two presidents in the future, one is a robot and the other is a human. The country is split 50-50 in terms of power, representation, and decision-making. Each president must represent their respective race and the mutual goal is to minimize conflicts between the two races, the human race and the robot race and to live and coexist peacefully on planet Earth. This won't be a 100% failsafe system, but it's the best control system we have so far. Will these robots kill or harm people? Probably. It's the same as asking the question, will humans kill or harm people? However, with the robots climbing on board the US Constitution, the crimes against humans are minimized. Some would even say, that's the best outcome we can never ask for. We managed to minimize conflicts between humans and robots and we are able to coexist peacefully with them on Earth. 